fourth to do battle with the mighty Spanish Armada, he was having a friendly tiff compared with the sports-loving men of Britain who last Wednesday night had to face hordes of marauding wives. If your phone calls are anything to go by, whole families were at each other's throats. The carnage was dreadful to behold. And all because of one woman, this woman, Glenda Jackson as Queen Elizabeth I in the new BBC Two Wednesday night series, Elizabeth R. The trouble that she caused, of course, was due to her clashing with Sports Night with Coleman on BBC One. <laughs> I'd have thought, Mr. Herbert, that that was a pretty clear alternative there, but I don't think you did, did you? No. Um, my first consideration is that the BBC always seems to think that if you've got an interest in sport, you can't possibly have an interest in anything cultural at all. There was no quarrel about it in our house. We both wanted to see both programmes. Now, Mrs. Ringrose, if my notes are correct here, you said you felt like killing your husband on Wednesday night. I That's when you rang did, up. Mr. Barrett. When I saw him pitching in there with Manchester City, I knew I'd had it. But that's what it is. Sport is more than an interest, isn't it? It's an obsession. And I couldn't quarrel with an obsession. Not at that particular moment, anyway. What about Mr. and Mrs. Ballard? Did you come uh, to we... blows? No, not quite. But I won, but just. Yes. Along with three quarters of my mates at work who won. Did you not have your heart in the fight, Mrs. Bella? No, I did a crossword. <laughs> do, you, do you think the average woman really gives a damn? The average woman really cares very much about all the theorizing which is being done by various women on behalf of the women's liberation movement, be it you or T. Grace Atkinson or, or Kate Millett. I, I often wonder whether it's even coming near the average woman's psyche, whether, whether she even is reading what you're talking about. Not reading literally, but reading it in the terms of anything getting through at all. Well, let's face it, you know, liberation isn't a reading list. It doesn't mean joining a library. It doesn't mean turning into an academic on women's rights or something like that. If I were to say that I don't think women care very much, that would be tantamount to saying I think that women don't care very much about anything. And if that's true, then you can gauge the magnitude of the problem, that apathy is no state to be in. The thing is that women may not care very much about the word liberation as it's been presented to them, but it's being very ineptly presented to them. They do care about a better life. And what my book says is, you know, carry on asking, but remember that the answer is in here. You want a copy of the female eunuch? Excuse me, but as you can see, all the tables seem to be occupied. Do you mind? No, I don't mind. Oh, you speak English. That's ruined it. I was hoping I'd devastate you with my accent. I wouldn't have thought Jason King needed to do this. Do what? Pick up girls in cafes. It's only a rumor. I'm insatiably curious. I came to this table for one reason. Oh? Find out why someone's so beautiful. She looks so sad. Do you think I'd tell you? No, but you obviously have a problem, and I have a genius for solving other people's problems. Mucho simpatico. What is this? My telephone number, in case you run away. I read somewhere that Jason was the most popular. Now it's time to embarrass some famous faces as we ask, where were they then? We advised you said to came as a result of my own mistake and making my own girlfriend pregnant. Um, and I went through about three months of um, hell, torment, whatever you say, in trying to find um, somebody who could give us help. Um, and I was very lucky then that, you know, when she was nearly three months pregnant, um, we finally came across a very kind woman doctor who in fact helped a lot in the advisory centre since. Um, and as a result of um, my own personal um, experience, um, and perhaps of the experience when I first came down to London of not knowing anyone and going through a period of about a month of loneliness in the basement, and, um, you know, I decided to um, set up a centre um, which dealt with problems or any problems of young people. How long you ever do you know? Ten weeks. My periods are so irregular that uh, this was the first opportunity that I really had to, you know, to be able to find out. Okay. Um, well, look, what we'll do, um, it's a very, very simple, easy operation if you want an abortion, which I presume you do. Um, we'll arrange it 
um, for you in Birmingham, which is they're very mm -hmm. kind people, very good people who are helping there. Um, and as long as it's done by good doctors and a good nursing home, you've got absolutely nothing to worry about. We worked out that there was no need for shops to be charging the amount they were for records. So we started a mail order company that would sell any record from any record manufacturer for 10% to 25% less than a commercial price. For instance, we could buy a record from EMI for 31 shillings, which a shop would sell at 40 shillings. Instead, we sell it for 35 shillings. Log inquiries, please. Virgin Records is helping hundreds and hundreds of um, young people throughout the country to get records at about six shillings cheaper than, or six to eight shillings cheaper than they would anywhere else. Um, at the same time, uh, it's also starting up new groups who, uh, you know, have been scorned by some of the big companies and were, you know, listening to their records and give, and give them a chance to get going themselves. Whiz kid Richard Benson there. I always wonder why he called his company Virgin Records. And now, here's a record of some vintage ads from 1971. This is it. The now designs for that shirt by Double Two. The latest new knitted. The greatest for color and style. That shirt is something else. And it's tapered to fit your body like skin. It's that shirt in Dacron Cotton by Double Two International. Now on release. Every day and every way, you're okay with us. Us goes where we go to help keep us dry. The hotter we get, the harder us works. Us, the deodorant for him, for her, for all of us. Every day and every way, you're okay with us. Day after day, you're okay with us. Night after night, you're okay with us. Follow Harry. Get seven pounds for your old cleaner when you buy Electrolux from Civic. Miss A. Weston, secretary. Tights by time. Nine till five tights. Daytimes. Smoothly efficient. Angie Weston, hair down, having fun. Tights by time. Playtimes. Happily pretty. Miss Angela Weston, lady in love. Tights by time. Love times. Soft. Sheer and romantic. Easier to choose than a man. From the round-the-clock collection of tights by time. If you were the only boy in the world and I were the only girl There would be such wonderful things to do I could do those things for you She was admiring my tie. It's my favorite too. Favourite ties are matchmates. They do tend to get noticed. In Terraline and Crimpley. Favourite matchmates for the only boy in the world. That's a nice shirt. It's a Ben Sherman. Did people really wear shirts like that? Daylight? Well, Roger Moore and Tony Curtis did in The Persuaders an unashamed chunk of genuine dyed-in-the-wool television hokum. The series was set up by Sir Lou Grade and cost two and a half million pounds to make the most expensive series ever of the time. Our viewers will not be a whit surprised to hear that by the time this first episode was screened, Sir Lou had already pre-sold the series for three million pounds. Much of this, in fact, came from the United States, but they put it out against Mission Impossible, which was so popular that after one season they cancelled the Persuaders. But not away, not away. Roger Moore was making so much money that he was Britain's first actor to become a millionaire from television. The Persuaders is what is known in the trade as a buddy-buddy series, so sit back, feet up, unbutton your safari suit and shirt if necessary, and enjoy.